Come on and rise to your feet. Let's praise the Lord on this morning. Hallelujah. There's something about the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
that when you call on the name of Jesus, something happens. So can we just take a moment to believe that God is going to do something in somebody's life simply because we're calling on the name of Jesus? So hear this. Jesus. 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 Now, now check it out. We have any radical believers in the house? Where the radical believers in the house? Y'all come up here and meet me up here. Where the radical believers? Where the radical believers in this house? Believe that if you call on his name, something's gonna happen. Everything has to change. Everything's got to change. Everything has to change. Jesus, everything has to Jesus, Jesus, everything has to Jesus, 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 everything has to Jesus, Jesus, everything has to Jesus, Jesus, everything has to Jesus, Jesus. Watch this. Watch this for those that don't believe that calling on the name of Jesus to change something in your life. We're all our cancer survivors that call on the name of Jesus. If you're a cancer survivor, just wave your hand in there. Look at your name and say, I know what they're calling on the name can do for you. Just say, I know what calling on the name can do for you. I, I, I just want to say we're calling on the name of do for you. Anybody ever been addicted to something and then you call on the name and you no longer addicted? Let me see you call on Jesus. 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 Oh, can I go in the front? Can I go in the 
can I go another further? If your marriage was in trouble, and then you, you knew it was about to come to an end, but you called on the name of Jesus and Jesus saved your marriage, let me hear you shout Jesus. Jesus! 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 Let me tell you, man, there's so many reasons. Everything has to change when you call on the name of Jesus. You see, you see, demons tremble when you call on the name of Jesus. You see, you want to get something out of your house? Call on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you ready? So if you believe that Jesus could turn your situation around right now, let me hear you call on him. Jesus! 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 Check it out. I'm just giving you Bible. The Bible said that when two touch and agree on anything, that Jesus would be in the mix of whatever we ask of our Father in heaven, it shall be done. If you need God to do something in your life, do something in your spouse's life, do something in your children's life, just grab a hand of somebody and say, would you stand in agreement with me? Tell say, would you stand in agreement with me? Now right now, y'all just both stand in agreement, just shout, Jesus, 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 keep shouting, keep shouting, the enemy is being destroyed, your chains are being broken, your marriage is being restored, your health is coming back to you, you being set free, whatever has you bound, has to let you go, because you're calling on that name, because you're calling on that name, because you're calling on that name, Jesus, 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 Hallelujah. Now you believe that God is moving on your behalf. You believe that you stood in agreement with somebody and that God's going to turn your situation around. Why don't you give God the praise he deserves? Come on, give him some radical praise in this house. Give him some radical praise in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for waking the way out of nowhere. Thank you for turning my life around. Thank you for bringing joy back in my life. Thank you for bringing peace in my life. Hallelujah. Everything has to change. Everything has to change. On your way back to your seat, five, seven people. The number seven is in the Bible, it's a number of completion. Find you seven people and declare that over their life. Tell them, say, everything's got to change. Tell them, say, everything's got to change. Tell them, say, everything's got to change. Everything's got to change, man. It's got to change, man. Hallelujah! Everything's got to change. Let's put our hands together.
Hallelujah. Oh, praise his name. Bless the Lord. You may have your seats. Oh, bless the Lord. There's something about that name. Something about the name Jesus, I promise you. Do, do, do you understand that even the heathen, when something hits them quick, fast, and the herd, the first thing the heathen says is Jesus? Because even the unbeliever has to know something about that name. Hallelujah. Man, let, let, let us move on before we, be, we stay here all day. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, say, that's not who we are. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, say, that's not who we are. But if the Holy Spirit have his way, we'll let the Holy Spirit have his way. Amen. Sometimes we just got to take a praise break right in the middle of it. Anybody need a praise break this morning? Anybody need a praise break? Anybody need a praise break? If you need a praise break, put your hands together. Some of y'all looking at these people jumping and shouting and dancing, but here it is. 
Elder Hurst and Elder Shalita Hurst in less than two years lost a son, lost a father, lost a mother, just bearing a brother, and they still got a reason to praise God. Got a Reginald Martin in the aisle right there, jumping and hopping. 37 years in prison, the Lord set him free. He's got a reason to praise God. Pastor Evans, sister pastor of this church, 14 years on death row, escaped from prison, got caught, went back a second time. The Lord said, I'm setting you free to go preach my gospel. Tom said, he's got a reason to praise God. Renette, Sheila, Jay, all who's diagnosed with cancer, Pastor Gales, all of them diagnosed with cancer. Now they're in our house, cancer free. They got a reason to praise God. Anybody got a reason to praise God? Put your hands together. Look, check this out, check this out. See, sometimes the people around you, sometimes the people around you gotta know what God will do through you. So if you're not embarrassed, if you did time in jail, City jail, county jail, or state prison. Come up to the front right now. If you're not embarrassed, come up to the front right now. If you did time. Anybody, if you did time, come up to the front right now. See, this is why we praise God. Because if God can take you out of jail and make you free, he who is free, who the Son has set free, is free indeed. I'm going to say it again. He who the Son has set free is free indeed. God, praise God like you thank you for your freedom right now. Hallelujah. Give him a mic. Hurts. Hallelujah. I'm telling y'all, this week, this ain't the time this week to start fighting. This is where you fight. I remember we was closing on our house. I was helping the seller do the floors, paint, do the yard to prepare for the go to closing. My wife had transferred the lights in our name, the water in our name, and we hadn't even closed yet. We were so excited, telling everybody. Days before we were going to close, they found out that they had made a mistake with the insurance, that we fell under what we were supposed to make each year for the insurance by $1,300, so we lost the loan. I was devastated. I jumped in my car and rode to New Orleans crying the whole time. My wife says, Shedrick, it ain't over till God says so. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. She called one of the intercessors. The intercessor said, baby, did God say that was your house? She said, yes, ma'am. She said, Jesus. <laughs> The next day, I got a call from the agent. He said, baby, we got one more trick up our sleeve. The seller was so mad what happened. He said, until I sell Hearst this house, I can't purchase my house, and then y'all gonna have a problem. So they start working behind the scenes, but it was God working behind the scenes. Come on, come on. I got a phone call that day. <laughs> they said, you got another loan, they're going to pay the closing costs, they're going to pay the down payment, <laughs> they're going to pay the insurance, totaling almost $11,000. <laughs> right. If I would have got the first loan, I would have had to 
pay all that. But Jesus. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, this is not the time to speculate. This is not the time to spectate. Get in here because whatever's waiting for you, God will fight for you right here, right now. If you ain't ashamed, come to the altar. Give God the praise. Tell him how good he is. Tell him how he's fighting when you don't even see the fight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. All right. You're next. You're next. Jesus. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Jesus. <laughs> I got him, bro. Jesus. Uh, uh, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hey, look at one another. And say, I don't care what nobody say about you. I don't care what nobody say about you. Say it loud. I don't care what nobody say about you. I know. I know. I'm not like I used to be. And I know. I know like I should be. And I know. Take a lifetime to be what I ought to be. I always got grace on my side. I'm all right. <laughs> begin to call the name on Jesus. God said, go to the altar and wash the fire. He said, watch what I do at the altar. I didn't know pastor was getting ready to call you to the altar, but he said, see the fire at the altar. And God said, I dare you to run into the fire so that you can be On yesterday, I am dealing with some issues with a son of mine. I'm at home by myself. My son deals with a little mental illness, and so he came into the room, and he began to ask questions of me, and I didn't begin to answer him, and so the more he got mad, the more that spirit rose up. I called on the name of Jesus. Oh, I called on the name of Jesus. That spirit had to flee out of my son. But God said, not only is he going to flee out of your son, if you run to the altar, the same fire that came against you, shot back me, shot in the is that the altar? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I'm trying to get out of this. I really am. But I told you when you shout the name Jesus, everything has to change. Do y'all hear? A spirit on her son, and the more she ministered, the angry he got until she stood in agreement with somebody, and all they said was Jesus. And it broke it. It broke it. They think they're walking into a blessing, and God said, No, I got something more than that. So here it is. That's for somebody. You thought the door got closed, but it was only closed to so open a greater door. He went from paying 11000 to getting 11000 given to him. You see, people up here, all these people that came up here, did time. Some of them up here because they survived cancer. Some up here just because they recognized that God delivered them from themselves. How I, I many of y'all know the greatest miracle God ever did in your life was to deliver you from you? I know that. That's who I am. I was a mess. A hot mess. A hot fine mess. But God said, I'll take a mess and I'll make it a masterpiece. Matter of fact, tell us about a prophesy over yourself. Tell them, say, I don't know what you think you're looking at, but you're looking at a masterpiece. Tell them, say, you're looking at a masterpiece. You are not a mess. You are a masterpiece. I'm going to say it again. Matter of fact, tell the person that came with you, say, you are not a mess. You are a masterpiece. All right? So, on the way back to your seats, on the way back to your seats, you know what I need y'all to do? One more thing. Find three, four people and tell them, say, I love you whether you like it or not. Hello. 
Hello. Can y'all hear me? Okay. God said, tell this because it might help somebody in their faith. Somebody might be wavering their faith, but God said, this is going to stir up somebody's faith and take them where they need to be. When my son passed away, and he was in the coroner's office for almost 40 days at the corner, at the uh, place, his body. So we had to get his belongings that he was killed in. So they sent the stuff to the house, but they had told me what they was going to put in there, what he had. He had the earrings in his head. He had two earrings in his head. He had a nose ring, and he had his watch, different stuff. So they sent the package to the house, and on, was written on the package what they had in it. So, I mean, one earring, I'm sorry. One, 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 one earring in the nose ring and the other belongings they had in there. So when Janique opened up, we opened it up, they had that one earring and they had the nose ring, stuff, other stuff they had in there. So one day I was in the back, because we were going through a lot when he died, you know, getting his body here and stuff like that. It was just was a lot, mental. Trust me, it was mental. So I was in the back one day and I started crying out to God and I was telling God, why are we going through this? Why are we going through this, Lord? Why are we going through this? And I said, Jesus, I need you. And I said, Cece, I'm so sorry we got to go through this. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry you had to go through what you had to go through. And I was just crying out in the back. So I went back in the living room, and I started cleaning up. Because when I get, get kind of nervous, I start cleaning up. I start sweeping everywhere. I start sweeping the house. So everybody was going through the house that day, coming down the steps. You know, uh, and I was cleaning that area. So... This, this day, particular day, after I got finished crying out to God, I went to get, go up the steps, and I heard the Holy Spirit say, look down. When I looked down, it was an earring. Now, mind you, they had one earring in that pack, only one, and that one was full of blood. When I looked down and then seen this one on the, below the stairway, it was shining like a diamond. It was shining, and plus it had the back on it, and it was clean. I picked it up. I said, what is this? I said, what is this? And I called Janique. I said, Janique, I said, where's that package that this stuff came in? She said, Mama, I had, had, had it with me. She was with Harold. I said, let me see that earring. And she showed me the earring through the FaceTime thing. And I said, this is the same earring. That one was full of blood, but this one was shining like a diamond. And God reminded me, you know, he said, because my faith was wavering, y'all. I was going through some stuff. I was going through some stuff. So the earrings matched each other. It was that same earring, because he had two earrings in his ear. But only one came in a package. Only one came in a package. So that day, I remember you had lost <laughs> Jesus. The earring appeared on the floor, y'all. I don't know how it got there, but God was answering my prayers because all the stuff I, we was going through to let me know your son is okay. He's with me. And that diamond, that diamond, it lines up with a lot of stuff. What Pastor said this year, I'm telling you what's going what's to happen in our lives if we line up. Listen, after that, I had a dream. And in a dream, CC appeared. And my dad was in a dream. He passed away in 2005. 2005. And I don't know. I just got to tell this one also. He was in a, we was in, a, we was in, at the house. And my dad told Cece, he said, go see your grandmother. Because she's about to come be with me. She's about to come be with me. Telling Cece, if you don't do something about it, my mom been grieving over him. If you don't do something about it and go see her, she's going to end up where I'm at. Cece said, she ain't got to come to me. To us, we go, I'm going to her. And he shot through the ceiling with some wings. And in another part of the dream, I was outside. And I was outside. I had lost something. And I was looking for something. So he appeared to me. And he said, Mama. He said, and I, when I seen him, I started jumping up and down like that. And he said, what you looking for? And I was looking on the ground for something. I was looking for the, on the ground. And when I looked, I seen diamonds everywhere. I was, I was seeing diamonds everywhere. They were just everywhere. And he said, everything you lost... God about to give it back to you. God, God about to recover. And when he said that, he shot up again and he went into the sky. I just want to let somebody know, whatever you believe in God for this year, put your trust in him. Never give up. Keep striving. Keep pressing because that's what we're doing. We're pressing towards the mark. Hallelujah. So keep doing what God has called you to do in this season and watch. Trust me. Hold God to his word. In your heart, let the word meditate in your heart, day and night, and God is going to bring it to pass. All that stuff he showed us, all that stuff he showed me in the dream, line up with Pastor is saying, I'm telling you, in this season, God is going to do what he called to do. Because he's a man of his word. Hallelujah. Man, one last person, Elder Sharice.
And I need everybody that did time to come back up here real quickly. If you did time, any kind of time, come back up here real quickly. The, the Lord showed Elder Cherie something while we were in prayer. I want y'all to form it side by side, two lines like a soul train. Did follow down that aisle, down the aisle, facing each other. Make an aisle, an opening, facing each other, open, open, up. Up. open up. Right, open up as wide as that aisle. As wide as that aisle, back up into the aisle. Back up. Keep going. Go down there with Chris. There we go. Chris, y'all move down some into the aisle. Move it to the aisle. We need to have some room up here. All right, and just get two by two. That's good right there. Two by two facing each other. Just go down facing each other two by two. All right, move down past the others, please. All right, move down, sir. All right. All right, stay right there. So there, there is a spirit of release in, in the house today. For every individual in this place that has a family member that is currently incarcerated, my son has been in there for two and a half years. The system has been playing with him, toying with him. God said today there's a spirit of release that's in the house today for loved ones that are incarcerated. All of these individuals that's down this hour that has been incarcerated, the, the power is in your hands. I want everybody in this place to go down this road and come down this tunnel. We gonna chant the name of Jesus, Jesus. Y'all lay their hands, y'all lay your hands on them and go back to your seat. I'm telling you what I know about the spirit of God. The spirit of relief is in the house today. Let's go. If you Jesus. got a family member, if Jesus. you got a family member or a friend that's in the system, that's believing God to come out, that's the spirit of release today. Come walk down by faith. Come walk down by faith and touch and agree with everyone that God has released. Yes, guys. Man, look at all of the people Jesus. believing for people. Jesus. 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, everybody. Jesus, 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 healing in the name of Jesus, 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 as y'all going through, as y'all going through, you call that person's name, say, God, I believe for that release. And you say that name. If it's Jimmy, you say, God, I believe for Jimmy's release. As you're going through this tunnel. Jesus, 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 Jesus. As they pass, y'all, as they pass, as they pass, y'all can go back to your seats. As they pass, y'all can go back to your seats. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to throw an audible right now. I'm going to throw an audible right now. Um, Brian, if y'all would get my leg turned and bring it out.
Y'all can bring my leg turned out, and I'm going to throw an audible. We're going to go straight into the word from here. Um, but I don't know if y'all just saw what I saw. Did y'all see? Did you all see? the number of people who have been suffering in silence? I had no idea that many, that many of you were believing for a family member or a friend that's in the system. See, that, that's the reason why we got to be connected. I'm putting out a plug for the connect groups right now because you don't have to fight by yourself, man. God has given like-minded people. You see, I guarantee when you came in this door, you might have thought you was the only one that did time. Until we say everybody did time, come up front, and you got 12 people come up front. Amen. Then you hear some of them, that row, 30 plus years in jail, serving in the house of God now. And I'm telling you, God is so funny. He's so awesome. Because the word he gave me today is simply God gets the glory. I'm a, see, 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 some, see, some of y'all got it. But you don't understand. God wants to use the weak the young, the broken, the flawed, the mistake-prone person to use their life to get glory out of their life. High five, three people tell said God gets all the glory. Come on, find you three people tell said God gets all the glory. You've been bound by something and the Lord sets you free. He gets the glory out of your mistake. He gets the glory out of what you did wrong. See, one of my favorite scriptures is 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. And it simply says, Blessed be God, the God of all comfort who comforted us through our trials and tribulations that we may be able to offer that same comfort to those who are going through the same thing. So here's the revelation. If you went through it, he finds you worthy. Somebody going to get that in a minute. See, if God didn't think he could use you at a later date, he would have never allowed you to go through it in the first place. He allowed you to go through it because he finds you worthy to be used at a later date. If you believe, if you receive what I'm telling you, shout, I'm worthy. Get your Bibles. Hold your Bibles up in there. Uh, I'm bypassing announcements and welcomes. We do the welcomes before we leave. Amen. But we got to flow with the Spirit this morning. You get your Bibles, hold it up in there, your iPhone, Bible, whatever you have. All right? If you don't have anything, point at the screen. That'll be your Bible today. Amen. Repeat after me, say, Lord, this is my Bible. I believe that every word is inspired by you. Therefore, I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do, and I can have what it says I can have. Say, devil, this is the sword of the spirit. I should be considered armed in the stream of dangers. Now say this with attitude, say, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon. Form against me will ever prosper because I am living the word. I am living the word. I am living the word in Jesus' name. Amen. First Corinthians chapter one. First Corinthians chapter one. Amen. I might need that glass this morning, man. The water. I normally don't bring water up here, but I feel I'm gonna need it this morning. Amen. I almost feel like a Baptist preacher. I'm sweating, and I haven't even said nothing. Amen. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Do y'all have 1 Corinthians chapter 1? Beginning with verse 26. Look what it says. It says, For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Let me say that again. Not many according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world. To put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. Verse 28, and the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. Let me rewrite, re rewrite that in my own words. And those who went to jail for murder, those who went to jail for robbery, those that were addicted to drugs and alcohol and those that were addicted to gambling, those that were kind orders and everybody, all of those things, those base things of the world and those things which are despised, God said, I choose them. <laughs> Somebody going to get in here in a minute. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things at all, verse 29, that no flesh should glory in his presence but of him you are in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness sanctification and redemption verse 31 why that as it is written he who glorifies let him glory in the Lord find your three people and tell them say God wants to get the glory out of your life tell them say God wants to get the glory out of your life Again, thank you all for being here for worship. Again, um, we thank you for joining us this morning in person and all of our people online. We miss you. Love to see you soon. But uh, nevertheless, you, you're still family. Amen? Hallelujah. So um, if you guys were here two weeks ago, we took a break for Mother's Day. I started a new series called Five Smooth Stones. And on this series, centered around the story of this little shepherd boy by the name of David who defeated this massive giant called Goliath. And in part one, I talked about you have to know your enemy. You have to know your enemy. And in that teaching, we unpacked a little bit about Goliath and we showed how Goliath in many ways is just like the devil who's actively seeking to devour God's people. But then there was David who was an unlikely hero chosen by God for this moment. But the truth be told, the ultimate plot of the ultimate theme of that story is not David, but it's about God's power to deliver his people. Are you with me? Now David was young. David was just a little shepherd boy. David was probably in that day would have been voted less likely to succeed in his high school class. He definitely would not have been voted the most popular in his class. So what that lets us know is that God loves to use the young, the weak, the broken, and the flawed to get glory out of their life. So I'm going to tell you again before I even get started. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you said. It doesn't matter your past. It does not matter your mistakes. It does not matter how many things you've broken, how many people you destroyed. None of that matters because God still wants to use you to get glory out of his life. Are you with me this morning? If you, if you believe what I'm telling you already, shout say, Lord, use me. Now, before I go any further, for all of you self-righteous people who believe that you're not weak, you're not young, you're not broken, and nor are you flawed, here's a fact for you. All of us are in some shape, fashion, or form is broken. We all are broken. In some shape, fashion, or form, we all are broken. Look what 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 says. It says, but we have this treasure in earthly vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not in us. 
I like the Good News translation. It says it this way. We who have this spiritual treasure are like common clay pots. In order to show that supreme power belongs to God and not us. What do you mean by that common clay pot? I mean, pot. You see, just like a clay pot, I mean, pot, when you drop it, you break. We are the same way. Let the right amount of adversity hit us. And I don't care how spiritual you are, you too can break. Amen? But when we understand who we really are as people, we're breakable spiritually, physically, and emotionally. Look what it says in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 32 and 34 in the NIV. It says, I do not have time to tell you about Gideon, Barak, Samson, and Jephthah, and David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms. They administered justice, and they gained what was promised. Who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword. But look at the last part I love. It goes on, it says, whose weakness was turned to strength. Look at your neighbor and say, you may look weak, but you're really strong. Amen. Hallelujah. See, God takes our weaknesses and he turns them into strength. Amen. Thank you. Into strength. And the Bible talks about Gideon. The Bible says that Gideon was a mighty man of valor. But the truth be told, Gideon was the weakest kid in the weakest family with the weakest tribe. But although he was considered to be the weakest in the entire nation, when God spoke to him, he called him a mighty man of valor. You see, we got to get to the place that we don't believe what people call us. We don't believe what people say about us, but we believe what God says about us. Are you with me? Look what it says in Judges 6, 11, and 12. It says, Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the tabernacle tree, which was in Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Abirite, while his son getting a thrash weed in the wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites. He's hiding. All right? And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. You learned about two and a half, about, about six weeks ago, that when the Lord is with you, everything you do prospers. Can I ask this morning, who is the Lord with this morning? Amen. When the Lord is with you, you are a mighty man of valor. When the Lord is with you, you are a virtuous woman. When the Lord is with you, you are more than a conqueror. It does not matter where you come from. What socioeconomic situation you grew up in. It doesn't matter if you, grew, you, you finished the top of your class or didn't graduate at all. In God's eyesight, you are still mighty. And God wants to use you. Amen? So although he was the youngest kid, God saw him as a mighty man of valor. Let's talk about Peter. Old Peter was anything but stable. If you read your Bible about Peter, Peter was not a stable dude. At all, you see, this is the same man that will flip out in a minute, all right? But when Jesus looked at him, he looked at him and told him, he said, you're my rock. He said, I'm going to build my church on you, on the confession that came out your mouth. Let me ask you a question. If people think you're crazy, they call you crazy, they act and treat you like you're crazy, but Jesus said, you his rock, which one are you? You his rock. Are you with me? Then we got Abraham, the father of faith. Had so much faith, he lied, told his wife to lie twice because he was afraid to die. But the Bible said that he was a what? The father of faith. So God loves to use the weak, the feeble, the broken, and the flawed, all so that he can get glory out of their lives. Everybody say God gets the glory. Now that brings us to young David. Young David is a perfect example of this. So I'm going to take the rest of my time I have with you and talk to you about David. Amen? Amen. Now, if y'all remember last week, I had my grandson to come out here. I mean, two weeks ago, I had my son, grandson to come out here with Joe John. And you remember Joe John just towered over him. You see, because the Bible says that Goliath was actually 10 feet, 4 inches tall. He wasn't 7 feet. He was 10 feet. Goliath made the tallest NBA players look small. 
All right? But here you have this young shepherd boy, David, that's facing him. And, and that he's like, I'm not scared of you. Because why? When the Lord is with you, then everything you do what? Prosperous. So when we understand this, when we hear a statement like David is a man's after God's own heart, we have a tendency to forget that this was just a little boy that was fighting a giant. Because, see, we look at David's story in the end, but we don't really follow David's story all the way through. You see, David's story started because nobody in his own family believed in him. You see, if we would go to second, if we would read First Samuel chapter sixteen, the Bible says that because God was so dis, God was so displeased with King Saul that He told the prophet Samuel, He said, "Go down to Jesse's house and anoint me a son for out of his sons I have chosen me a king." God said, "I chose this king for myself." You see, but the problem was that when He got to Jesse's house, Jesse, even the prophet Samuel. Say, I need you to catch this revelation. Even the prophet Samuel looked at the stronger boys, the older boys, the, the more healthier boys, and thought that it would be one of them. So here it is. Tell you never said church people get it wrong too. <laughs> Just because you're in church don't mean you always discern right. I'm trying to help somebody that think you so holy. Amen? But he... he Sam, Jesse, the father, paraded every boy, all of them, in front of Samuel. And said, said, nope, that's not it. That's not who I'm looking for. That's not him. You see? And then the Lord spoke to Samuel. And here's what he told him. In verse, verse 7 and 17, 14 to 18. I'm actually getting ahead of myself. I don't want to read that one yet. He actually told me, he said, look, he said, here's the problem with you. He said, you like people. You're not like me. He said, people look on an outward appearance. They look at you, they size you up. They think you a certain thing. They think you behave a certain way. Because you look a certain way, you must do a certain thing. Amen. See, if I, if I would have stayed in the normal course without pulling an audible, I was going to show you a church invite video today. And it was this guy sitting down reading a book, had on his blazer, had on his glasses or whatever. And then the guy that came up next to him had a big old, what they call that, the, the mohawk tattoos all up his body and everything else. Had his drumsticks as he was doing this. And at the end of the thing, he pulls out a paper and says, hey, man, my church is doing something cool. Can you come to church with me? But how many of us, if we walk in and we see a guy got his hair all spiked up, tattoos all over, nose in his, I mean, pierces in his ear and in his mouth and, and all up his nose and everywhere else, and he's walking around and he's walking like this. How many of y'all going to look at him and say, man, that's an evangelist? Or you going to look for the one that got the long skirt and don't wear makeup? And See, because why? You can have church rules that make you look holy and you just as much as a heathen as anybody else. That's what Teddy never said. We're not doing church. We are the church. So I'm talking about this little shepherd boy. I'm trying to help somebody that God used to destroy a giant. What am I trying to show you? He was just a normal person that nobody ever thought could be used. Are you with me? See, so right here, look what it says in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 14 to 18. It said, David was the youngest, and the three oldest followed Saul. Talking about the other brothers. But David occasionally went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. Verse 16, and the Philistines drew near and presented himself 40 days, morning and evening, then Jesse said to his son David, take now for your brothers an ephah out of the dry grain and these ten loaves and run to your brothers at the camp and carry these ten cheeses to the captain of their thousands and see how your brothers fare and bring back news of them. So if he did this often, then everybody who looked at him just saw him as an errand boy. Oh, that's just a boy that brings us bread. That's a boy that comes checks on his brother. He can't, he can't possibly be the one to destroy the giant. 
Can I ask y'all a question? How many people have sized you up in your life and not qualified you for what God said you can do? They look at you, you can't do this. They look at your past, oh, you done made too many mistakes, you can't do this. They look at your job, you have, oh, you can't qualify for this. But when God be for you, nobody, no man can be against you. But get this, this young kid, Solomon, Samuel, he said, hold up. God said, these are not none of your sons. None of these boys are the king. He said, say another one. He said, oh, oh, yeah, I do have another one. He's out in the field. And, it, and I don't know about y'all, but it's a horrible feeling when your parents forget you. He said, oh, I got another one. I forgot about him. Oh, I, I, I didn't even think about him because he really don't matter to me. You know, he's not like his brother, so I don't see him the same way. He said, but I do have another one. Sammy said, go get him and bring him here. And when he brought him here, he said, that is him. That's the one that's going to be anointed. That's the one that I'm going to make king. What am I trying to tell you today? You may have been passed over, looked over, cast aside, abandoned, and nobody gave you a chance in hell to do anything good, but the Lord said the whole time, you've been the one. They got you never said, you're the one, baby. The key phrase in what he said was, God does not look at the appearance or the physical statue, said, God looks at the heart. He said, people can't see you and determine who you are. But they will see you and paint a picture of who they think you are. So let me ask you a question. If Samuel, the prophet, the church guy, got it all wrong with who was going to be king, then how many of your family members and your friends are getting it all wrong about who you are? See, the only one that declares who you are is God. So why are you worrying about what they say about you, what they post about you, how they blasting you on social media? No, if you want to put me on social media, thank you for the free advertisement. You see, here it is. Can, can, I, can I be real with you? I'm a little night ward boy from New Orleans. So there was a certain way that we grew up. All right? And, uh, you know, it was crazy. I'm from the nine. I don't mind dying. <laughs> I still understand why we took up that mindset. <laughs> I really don't. But I was talking to a kid. I said, hey, man, I said, let me tell you something. A kid that was on, he came to do his community service. I said, why are you here? He said, I got in a fight. So you got in a fight? I said, why you got in a fight? Well, what you going to do? You disrespected me. I said, was he within your own reach? He said, no. I said, then what did he disrespect? He said, where you going with this, Pastor? I said, man, I said, look, bro. I said, I have a right to defend myself. I don't have to let you beat me because I'm saved. <laughs> let me help somebody with that. I ain't telling you about that fight, but I'm telling you, you don't have to get beat just because you saved. Come on this side with some real gangsters that ain't got no problem with fighting. All right? So I told him, I said, son, I said, here's my philosophy. Everything outside of this belongs to you and the world. Everything inside of this, I got to protect. I said, so until you come here, you're not a threat. So your words don't mean nothing. But how many people in a grave, how many people in jail now because of something said that God never endorsed? I'm going to say that again. You done got in fights, you done broke up relationships, you done broke up with people because of something said about you that God never endorsed. Because why? If somebody tell you you ain't going to never amount to anything, God never said that. So since God didn't say that, then I know you don't know God. So since you don't know God, why am I going to let your opinion about me matter? So 
if they can lie, who's the father of lies? The Bible said that the devil is a liar and he is the father of lies. So if you won't believe a person, why are you going to believe the devil? So when the devil tell you, you're never going to come out of your situation. You're going to always be this. You're going to always be that. But when you read your Bible, it says that you're first and not last. You're above and you're not beneath. That you're more than a conqueror. Whose story are you going to believe? What report are you going to believe? Young David say that, I don't, know what you, I don't care what y'all think about me. When God anointed him to be king, his first act of king was not after he was king. His first act of king is when he took on Goliath to defend God. Watch this. He didn't defend Israel. I'm going to tell you again. David did not defend Israel. He defended God. Can I show you in the word? Amen. So when we see this, consistently throughout scripture, God uses people who are the weakest, the poorest, the brokenest, and the most flawed. Because David was looked down upon by his own family. Amen? And here it is. Although they doubted him, his own father doubted him. His daddy said, oh, I didn't, when you say the king, I didn't even consider him. Read your Bible. He said, I didn't even think about that boy being the king. I never saw it in him. How many of us we are still stuck because we're trying to be something that they never saw in us. He said, never saw it in us. But that, here it is. They doubted him, but it never caused David to doubt himself. So when he got down there and he asked him, he said, hold up. Remember I told you he didn't defend Israel, he defended God. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that is defying the armies of God? He said, who is this that think he can beat God? He said, what is going to be given to the man that killed him? And when they began to tell him all the things that they was going to give him, they were like, man, really? I got him. I'll fight him. And, it, and the king himself tells David, you cannot beat him. This is a man of war, and he, he's been a man of war since his youth, and you're just a little boy. You're young, you're weak, you're unintelligent, you're never going to turn nothing like out to be anything. You're just like your no-good paw. <laughs> oh, I'm just trying to bring all the stuff that y'all been telling your kids. And David said, I don't care what you say about me and nobody connected to me, I know who God is. He said, let me tell you what I can do. He said, with God, he said, I remember there was a bear that came down and snatched my little sheep. He said, so when I went down there, I took that sheep from that bear. Now, you got to get this. Everybody say he had two battles. He had four. He said, I took him. Then a lion came. And he said, took my one little sheep. And I went down there and I took that sheep out that lion's mouth. But here it is. And he said, then they messed up. I let them go when they were trying to eat. But when they tried to kill me, he said, then I killed the bear. Then I killed the lion. And the same God that was with me then is going to be with me when I go out and kill this uncircumcised Philistine. See, some of you all, you've been losing the battle because you're trying to fight it without God. David said, I might be small, I might be young, you know, even when he got older, he was flawed, made major mistakes, murderer, adulterer, hitman, if you want to call it, all of those things. And God said, in spite of all of that, he's my king and he's still a man after my own heart. Because why? God looks past the mistakes. He looks past the brokenness. He looks past all of the stuff that we, that we got caught up in. And he wants to use us for his glory. But some of us, we cannot be used because we listen to the father of lies who told us what we are not. Rather than listen to the God Almighty who's telling us who we are. Is this helping somebody? 
Look at your name and say, God wants to get the glory out of your life. Broken, messed up, jacked up, shacked up. He still wants to get glory out of your life. You just have to get to the place that you're not going to doubt God. You see, our problem is, is that we focus on the negative when God is always speaking the positive in our life. Man, if I focus on all of the mistakes I've ever done, I would never stand up here. But I can stand up here because God told me one thing. He said, I'm calling you to preach my gospel. And when he spoke to me, he spoke to me audibly. I was in the middle of the worst trial in my life, facing 20 years in prison for something I didn't do. And at a conference, T.D. Jakes conference, manpower, praise and worship. Y'all heard my story? Praise and worship. Everything went into slow motion. And I'm just looking. I'm watching people. I'm seeing people jump in the air, slow motion, clapping their hands. And the Lord is like he pulled me off the ground. And he spun me around in that Coliseum in Greensboro. He said, I am calling you to preach the gospel. You are operating in the office of teacher, and you will speak to arenas of men like this. Can I tell you, in 2010, it came to pass. I'm talking about all of it, because, see, that was in 1996. 1997, I answered my calling. From 97, the Lord sped up my whole life from 97 to 2001, I done went from joining the church, getting baptized, to becoming an elder in less than three years. And then after that, I get a phone call and say, you called a pastor a church. Never wanted to pastor. I never asked for this. God called me to this. That's the problem. You got a lot of people that want this. And when they get this, they misuse this. And abuse this and they hurt people. Do you understand that there are more de church people than unsaved people? 95,000 people in East St. Tammany don't go to church. Not all of them are unsaved, some of them just fed up with the church. Because we, we want to look good, tell them they're suits. That's why I don't wear them no more. Got to have the finest cars. Got to have the rims, the glasses, the gold on the side. And when people talk to you, you can't even be normal. What's up? How you doing? Good to see you today, doctor. I'm not a doctor. Just being honest. That's why you got to be real in the fire solo because when you tell the truth, you get blasted. You get talked about. You get slandered. You, and here it is. If I ever, 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 ever in my life again, y'all catch me being concerned about what somebody say, I give you permission to slap me. <laughs> slap my sisters right back into me. Because Why? You are not who man says you are. You don't even, God don't even see what they see. God said, I don't even look on the outside. I look on the inside. And the last time I checked, now nobody in this room is Superman. You don't have no x-ray vision to see what I am on the inside. And since you can't see what I am on the inside, your opinion about me doesn't matter. Tell somebody next to you say, your opinion, your opinion really doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Only, what Only what God says about me is true. Is true. Yeah. If you receive that, give God some praise. Yeah. Let me tell you something. The people that's going to come against you is normally going to be the ones closest to you. The Bible didn't tell us it was the people in the army that doubted David. It was David's brothers that doubted David. 
1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 26 through 29. Then David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that should defy the armies of the living God? And the people are answering him in this manner, so it shall be done for the man who kills him. Now Eliab, the oldest brother, David's oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger was aroused against David. He got mad with his brother because he simply asked, what's going to be given to the man that killed the giant? And his brother got angry with him. You have to ask yourself, you didn't say nothing about me. You didn't come after me. You didn't do me nothing. Why I'm getting upset with you? It's because the truth be told, he exposed his brother's fears. Because remember, his brothers was, was with the rest of the army on the side of the mountain, shaking when Goliath was out there, come down here and fight. Come down here and fight. Like, I ain't going down there. No, not me. You can go. I'm not going. And then little young David, least expected to succeed in high school. He shows up. And he said, hold up. What you going to get to take him out? His brother got mad with him because he exposed his brother's fears. Some of y'all trying to wonder why your friends and everybody got an issue with you. It's because now the anointing on your life is exposing some stuff that ain't right. That's why you got to be careful who you hook up with, who you connect with, who you hang out with. I give this credit to Bishop Samuel Blakes. He said it best. He said, if you want to change your hang-ups, you got to change your hangouts." Are you with me? But look what happened. He said, look what he says. Why did you come here? And with whom have you left those few sheep? You're not even a real shepherd, boy. You just got a couple of sheep, them few sheep. Isn't it amazing there was somebody jealous of you, how they try to downsize you? And he tells them to live few sheep in the wilderness. He said, you're in the wilderness. You're not even around people. He said, look what he said. I know your pride. Now you know my spirit. Can I drop this in for you? The next time you tell somebody, I know you. I know what you're thinking. I know you. I've been with you for all of these years. I know what you're about to say. Well, let me tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says in Corinthians that no man knows the spirit except the spirit that dwells within the man. It is impossible for you to know a person because you can only know your own spirit. See, y'all got quiet on me. Somebody told your spouse that just last night on the way to church, I knew you. Mm -hmm. Look what it says in verse 29. He, he, he tells us, and look at David's response. He said, what have I done now? You, you see that? What have I done now? He didn't say, what have I done? What have I done now? Because why? This is obvious that this is a habitual behavior of his brothers. They're always coming against him. He said, what have I done now? He said, is there a cause for this one? You see that? But verse 28 in the New International Version said that, when Eliab, David's oldest brother, heard him speaking with the men, he burned with anger. It sounds like Eliab did not want his brother to be around. But you need to look at the chronological order of this. This did not happen before David was anointed. His behavior against David is happening because David is anointed. He witnessed his brother get anointed when God rejected him. Some of you are you going through what you're going through with people because they see the anointing on your life. So let me speed up. It doesn't matter if you're young, you're weak. It doesn't matter if you made mistakes, if you're flawed broken. Look what the Apostle Paul told his protege Timothy when he was pastoring. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 12. He said, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. I don't care what they think about you. Just set an example. 
Show them what it is to live for God. Show them what it is to be connected with God. Show them what it is and what it means to serve God. Because it doesn't matter where you come from. It really only matters where you're going. Are you with me? So let me, let me speed up. Let me speed up. Back to verse 17. I mean, 1 Samuel 17, 26. I'm almost finished now. Look what it says. David asked the men standing near him, what would be done for the man who kills the Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Who is an uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? I need you to get that. Should defy the armies of the living God. The reason why David can be elevated beyond his youth, beyond his mistakes, beyond his flaws, because his focus was never on himself. His focus was always on God. We got to stop being caught up in ourselves. And allow our lives to be led by the Holy Spirit through God, by God. See, we're so caught up on who we are, how we look, that you lie about your profile on your Facebook page. How you gonna tell, how you gonna tell somebody that you 10 years younger, hundred pounds lighter, then gonna Photoshop your picture? And then if they want to meet you in person, all of a sudden, you're busy. <laughs> no, you ain't busy, you're lying. Because why? Facebook has given us the opportunity to become who we always wanted to be. And that may not necessarily be who God called us to be. Let me tell you something. I, I don't like being fine in the middle. I ain't fat. I'm fine in the middle. You call it, you call it what you want to call it. I know what I am. I'm fine in the middle. I'm working on it. I want to get finer. But you know what? I've grown past the point that if somebody said, said something about it, it don't bother me no more. Because this is the outward appearance. My question is, what does God see? Are you with me? Now, when I look in the mirror, I want to see what God really sees. I know he sees six packs somewhere in there. <laughs> somewhere in there he sees it. I want to see it on the outside. <laughs> Amen. Amen. My wife down there talking about hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. But I want to see it on the outside. But I, I want to close with this. I want to close with this. David knew he was young. David knew he was just a shepherd's boy. But David knew who he was in God. So Mark, I want to ask you these three questions. And then I'm I'm going to show you a video to encourage you before I pray for you. Here's the first question. What is the weakness in your life you want to hide the most? What is the weakness in your life that you want to hide the most? The next question is, what and who are the giants in your life? What are the giants and who are the giants in your life? And the last one, what are the things or situation that makes you feel completely inadequate, insufficient, and unable? Those are the three questions I have for you. The first one is, what was the weakness? What is the weakness in your life you want to hide the most? The second, what or who are the giants in your life? And the third one is, what are the things or situations? that make you feel completely inadequate, insufficient, and unable. And here it is. The reason why David was able to overcome all of that was because David's focus was on God. He didn't worry about what his brothers thought about him. He didn't worry about what his daddy thought about him. 
his only focus was on God. And he believed what God could do in his life and what God would do through his life. So the day before I pray for you all, I want to leave you with a, with a courage. Come move this for me, brother. Do y'all have that video ready for me? Video number four. I want y'all to pay attention to this video, then I'm going to pray for you all. Yeah. Nah, that's not it. That's not it. Stop it. Stop it. That's not it. This is the after announcement video. I know I, I put everything out of order for you. This is the after announcement video behind the preaching background. No, sir, there's another one in there. It was the one I had you to move behind the preaching backgrounds. Behind the preaching background slide, you should have a video. Look at your playlist. All right. The devil ain't going to get no glory out this one. Amen. I got to come back there myself. I'm going to go run it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all see it? Y'all don't see it? Well, I'm on the way to meet you. Hallelujah. Despite the world's lies and cries for conformity, you are beautiful and suitable. Never let anyone tell you that you do not measure up or compare. For my God made you unique and individualized and rare. You are important to the kingdom. So throw those idle thoughts of less than down the drain. Do not be detained or depressed by others who want you to be second best. But know your worth. Know that before God crafted the universe into existence with his breath, he thought of you and his son's redemptive death. So you are to die for so let your life play its unique melody to compose a beautiful score for his glory. Know that you are a masterpiece telling a redemptive story. So neglect the superficial opinions and descriptions, but pay attention to what God declares you to be and focus on his vision because you aren't too short, skinny, big, tall, light, or dark to be loved. God loves you and he knows your name. You are his daughter or son. Just read Genesis chapter one. It says that you are made in his image. So you are perfect and I pray that you know it. 
And I pray that the love of God overwhelms you with the peace and gives you a confidence that others will notice so that they know that you are a brave child of God and you won't be struck down by false comments about your identity because you are a child of the one true king, cherished, loved, and his. Amen. Hallelujah. So I end with this. End with this. You are enough. In spite of where you've been, what you've done, what you've been through, what's happened to you, or what pain you caused to others, God still wants to get the glory out of your life. And you are enough. Just the way you are. If you would see yourself the way that David saw himself, make your focus be on God and allow God to do the rest in your life, you're going to move forward. You're going to come out of this place called stuck. So my question to you is, if you're ready to move forward, you're ready to come out of this place called stuck, you, you receive that you're more than what your past has dictated or the the story that your pastor said about you, I want to pray over you that you're going to be able to move forward and God will get the glory out of your life. But I'm going to call you to come up here to do that. If you want me to pray for you, come up here right now. I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. This is your opportunity, man. It doesn't matter what mistakes you made with the flaws in your life, if you believe that God can change your life, all it is is just a walk of faith to this altar that, that I would be able to pray over you. And I need y'all to push forward in, press forward. All right. I want everybody that's coming up to, to just line all the way out. And then what we're going to do after this, the pastors and the elders are going to line up behind y'all. So press forward. Uh, the pastors, elders, y'all just line up all the way across behind them. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Let me tell you, I've been here before. I've been here before. I had two major flaws in my life. I had an addiction to people, which caused me to have an addiction to gambling. And I almost lost my family because of it. But then I had to come to grips that I can't fix me. Only God can fix me. And I surrendered my life to him. And ever since then, God has put everything back in order. So I'm going to give you about another 10 seconds. And we're going to move on. This prayer is for those who recognize they need God in their life. To come up. Remember, you are, you are enough, just like you are, man. Don't let the enemy tell you that you can't change or that things are never going to do. And calling you up don't mean you join in the church. It means that you're coming up to be set free. Amen? All right. <laughs> We're going to wait. Let her take her time. We're going to wait for her. She's pressing away. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, all of the elders that are behind them, ministers, if you're in the house, ministers, if you're not up at the altar, I want you to line up behind the people. All the ministers in the house as well. Y'all come line up behind the people. And wherever you are, wherever you are, all the elders and ministers are behind them. I want you just to put your hands on the people in front of you. Because we're touching in the green. Matter of fact, what I'm going to ask you to do, if you're okay with this, touch hands, a bump fist, whatever you need to do with the person next to you. We all want to be connected. And I have a young brother that's come up here that's actually in the place of worship. He's bowed down on his knees. I'm not saying you have to, but because we're all connected, and if he's okay with it, I'm going to lay hands on him. And that would be like me laying hands on everybody in here at one time. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
We thank you now for each and every person who has pressed their way to this altar today, God. Father, they come here on this day, God, believing and receiving total forgiveness, total restoration, and stepping into the place that you have for their lives, God. They're submitting to you at this time, God, for you to get the glory out of their lives. Now, Father, we thank you, God, that you are a God who loves to use the weak, the broken, the flawed, the feeble. We thank you now, God, that our mistakes have not disqualified us, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Now, Father, as your people stand here, God, you know that every single thing they've done, everything that's happened to them, everything they said, you know, the people who hurt them and the people that they've hurt. Now, God, we thank you that at this moment, this time, God, that you are making it right, that you will get the glory out of their lives, God, in the name of Jesus, God. So, Father, we thank you that when they leave this altar, they leave this altar free, God, free to go out, God, because they know you, they're free in you, they have discovered their purpose, and that is simply to be used by you to get your glory, and now they can go make a difference, God. So, Father, I thank you now that when they leave this altar, they will have a peace that surpasses all understanding. They will have a renewed hope in their life. They will be a curse in their spirit. Because, God, you love them in spite of it all. Now, Father, I thank you, God, that you see them as more than enough. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, amen. If you receive it, put your hands up and say, I receive in Jesus' name, amen. On your way back to your seats, on the way back to your seats, prophesy on as many people as you can on the way back to your seat. And tell them, say, you are more than enough. Tell them, say, you are more than enough. You are more than enough. You are more than enough, man. You are more than enough. You are more than enough, brother. You are more than enough, brother. Hallelujah. Praise team, Mike's. Praise team, Mike's. here today even though you came up for prayer you never confess with your mind and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord that is the basic requirement of salvation is that you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord so if you're ready today to confess with your mouth believe in your heart you're ready to receive salvation you're ready to be redeemed you're ready to start all things new the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. That means that the moment you saved everything you ever did, God only has one verdict, and that's not guilty. He says, I know you did it, but I find you're not guilty. I know that you're responsible for it, but I find you're not guilty. Because that's what salvation is. It cleanses and frees you from the guilt, the sin, and the consequence of sin because you have received salvation. So if you're ready today to turn this around in your life, I want you to bow your heads and repeat this prayer after me. I ask everyone to repeat it if you already say it. But for those who need salvation, please say this prayer at this time and receive salvation. Heavenly Father, I come to you just as I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son who died on the cross. And after three days, 
He rose again for my sins. Holy Spirit, come into my life and create in me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit. Heavenly Father, I believe by the confession of my mouth and the belief in my heart that Jesus is Lord. I am saved. I am saved. I am saved in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer for the very first time and believed what you said, doing them both together for the very first time, you are now saved. Now you need to find your church home that you can connect to, one that's going to teach you, one that's going to love you, one that's going to challenge you, one that will even correct you in the things of God that you will become all that God wants you to be. Now I also believe that every Sunday, every second of the hour, every second of the day that there's somebody who wants to recommit their life back to Christ. You're already saved. But you were like me. You fell away from God. You went did your thing and you, sin became pleasurable again for you. You never gave up your salvation. You gave up the fellowship with God. Now God wants to reconnect with you, but you have to want to reconnect with God. So if you want to do that, you don't have to repeat what I say. You have to take ownership of who you are. And the way you do that, you just simply say, God, that's me. Please forgive me. Please restore me. In Jesus' name. That's all you have to do. God, that is me. Please forgive me. Please restore me. In Jesus' name. Amen. For Heavenly Father, I come to you now for each and every person I want to recommit. That is telling you this moment, God, that is them who have sinned. It was them who broke the fellowship. It is them that they ask for forgiveness and they ask for restitution. God, I thank you right now that you are the God of the prodigal child. You have stood by, you have waited for this moment for your son, for your daughter to return home. And the only thing you're doing now, God, is you're rejoicing as they take ownership for why they left you. Now, God, we thank you right now that you're fully restoring them with their proper authority, their, all of their authority, their rights as a son and a daughter in the body of Christ. So, God, we thank you right now that you are forgiving, God, that you are just, God, that you faithfully forgive us and cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. So, God, I thank you right now that as they take ownership with all sincerity, you being the loving Father, you are the good, good Father that you are, you are restoring them into their proper place back with you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. If you gave your life, or if you recommitted, in here or online, you can go online as well, www.ltwi.org. You can connect by filling out a connect card and just check out the appropriate box. You gave your life, you recommitted your life, you want to join the ministry, you want to be baptized, whatever it is on that card, check it off, and our ministry, um, ministry team will be contacting you no later than tomorrow to walk you through your next steps. Amen? Amen. Now, how many of y'all believe, like I believe, somebody received salvation and somebody recommitted their life? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Um, what time is it? What time is it? Tired and offered times are opportunity for prosperity. It's an opportunity for you to trust God with your finances. Um, if you ever look around here, you don't have to worry about where your money goes. You can see it. Amen? You can see it. Hallelujah. Um, are we ready for our announcements? I now put everything out of order. Let us receive our announcements. Top story. Let's celebrate. Our pastor is turning 60. We will celebrate this joyous occasion Friday, June 3rd at 7 p.m. at Trinity Banquet Hall located at 1000 Caruso Boulevard, Suite 201, Slidell, Louisiana. Our attire is dressy casual. If you plan on attending the celebration, please register at Eventbrite. Faith for 50. We are asking every adult to have the faith to sow $50 in support of our men's conference. As a Faith for 50 sponsor, you will receive a t-shirt and your name will be on our LTWI Family Fest t-shirt, which will be worn at our Family Day in the Park event Saturday, June 18th. Couples may sew $75 and receive two t-shirts. Also, for those who would like to sew more or advertise their business, there will be various sponsorship levels. More details will follow.
If you need to sew in increments, you can, and the administration office will keep a record. On your envelope under other, please put FF50 and your giving amount. If on Easy Tithe or text to give, click on Faith for 50. Remember, we are blessed to be a blessing. Celebrating our seniors. Reminder, next Sunday we will celebrate our seniors in our 9 a.m. service. Come out and support our graduates and their wonderful accomplishments. Breaking news, Connect Track. Starting the first week of June, our Connect Track new members program will begin. This will be a four week program that helps you to know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. Date and time to follow. Connect Groups. Starting the first week of June, we will be launching our Connect Group Summer Session. The following groups will be available Cling, choosing a lifestyle of intimacy with God, Couples Ministry, Fire Starters, Firearms. Fishers of Men, Mothers of Incarcerated Children, Senior Line Dance, Family Matters, and more groups will be added. Dates and time will follow. Baptism. For anyone interested in being baptized, baptism will take place on any given Sunday. If you were baptized before and did not fully understand the meaning and purpose of baptism, we encourage you to attend our baptism class and get baptized again. If you're interested in getting baptized, please fill out a Connect card here at church or online at ltwi.org. Women's Day Program. Our very own Minister Renee Foster will be the guest speaker at Mount Zion Baptist Church Women's Day program. If you can, come out and support Minister Renee today at 3 p.m. at 432 Sullivan Drive, Bogalusa, Louisiana. For more information, stop by the hospitality desk to scan the flyer. The old saying goes, don't judge a book by its cover. And it's true. Don't look at that person who ends up next to you and say, that person is way too different from me. I could not invite him to my church. I can't have my friends see me bringing this guy in. We need to see others as Christ sees them with a holy compassion for the lost. You know what? We all need God, no matter what the person looks like or how different they are from you. As Christians, we are responsible to reach out to those around us. Their eternity depends on it. We need to stop worrying about the opinions of others. We need to open our eyes. New opportunities are put in front of us every single day to come out of our comfort zone, open our mouths, and speak these simple words. Hey man, if you're not doing anything this weekend, uh, check this out. We're doing something cool at our church. So. Easy Tithe. For those who wish to give electronically, Easy Tithe has been set up to make it more convenient for you to give. Through Easy Tithe, you can pay your tithe, give an offering, or sow a seed from your mobile device, cell phone, or computer. Easy Tithe is a secure online giving platform that allows you to give at any time or set up recurring offerings. If you wish to use Easy Tithe online giving, please visit our website at ltwi.org or text LTWI to 45777. Again, if you wish to use Easy Tithe online giving, please visit our website at ltwi.org or text LTWI to 45777. This has been your LTWI News. We pray that you will have an awesome worship experience and receive everything you came expecting to receive from God. And remember, if you live the Word, the Word will live through you. If you need to review this week's announcements, please visit our church's website at www.ltwi.org. Hallelujah. So y'all saw that I was talking about you can't judge a book by its cover. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If y'all saw that in the, in the park, y'all have thought the guy with the mohawk was the evangelist or the other guy. Amen. That's why you can't size up people by their look. 
All right, a couple of handheld announcements. Um, we want to keep Brother Donald and Sister Angela Donato lifted up in um, prayer. She's our head usher here. Um, while she was going home to see her mother on the other day, her mother transitioned while she was on a layover on a flight. So we want to keep, uh, keep them uh, lifted up in prayer. Amen. Uh, also, congratulations to Jamal Johnson and Taja Carrier. They're getting married in the sanctuary right after service this morning. Amen. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm going to go change clothes. I ain't going to do this. All right. Um, while, while I'm doing this here, um, if you see I have on the St. Tammany Hamburger Festival t-shirt today. Pastor Kitty and I, um, Sister Minister Jennifer Baptiste is actually, is it the director of the festival? What is your position? She's actually selected to be the director of the festival this year. So we want to support them as much as we can because supporting them will also be supporting our own. Amen. Hallelujah. Also, if you have a business in the church and you have a t-shirt, we believe in supporting everyone in this ministry. So this is actually the jump start of us wearing everybody's business t-shirt where every week we're going to wear a different shirt and we're going to talk about your business. Now, if I have never heard of your business, then you need to talk to me about your business before I wear your t-shirt. Everybody with a business card don't mean they're running one right. So we got to make sure that we got things in order, amen? We want to do that. Also, uh, high school seniors, high school seniors, um, this year, I don't know if it was a breakdown in the weather, the water, or something, but man, there were so many opportunities our high school seniors missed this year as it relates to scholarship offers or whatever, but we don't want you to miss out next Sunday. We want to honor you um, as a graduate, and it, as tough as it is, um, there's a thing that's called order. Everybody shout order. I told everybody last year that we, ne we were not going to do another year where we were going to give out honor scholarships and, and honor people and give out making the grades to kids that don't come to church. All right. All right. Put your hands together. All right. So those kids um, that's been coming to church, been attending church, um, you know, even if you couldn't make the church, y'all been connected, and we know how you how you, you remain connected. Then, by all means, we want to honor you next Sunday. So that means if we don't have your baby picture, your graduation picture, or picture of uh, activity, whatever you do, then we will honor you. But you won't be honored through the video presentation. So if you have not gotten that to us, we need it by no later than the end of business tomorrow, because it's already past that deadline. Amen. Also, um, today is the deadline for the Lauren Adams Scholarship. If you want to apply online for the Lauren Allen Scholarship, amen. All right, here, here's breaking news. Here's breaking news. Our men's praise team rehearsal is tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Come on, let's give it up for our men. I, I did not, let me, let me repeat this. I did not say men's choir. I said men's praise team. Just because you're a man and you think you may be able to sing don't mean you're going to be on this team. This is the praise team. Then we will have the choir where all of the brothers will come together for rehearsal. I just got to be honest with you because people think that, hey, I want to go be a part of something that you automatically get in. Look at your nibs, you got to know how to sing. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't look at me with that attitude. Hallelujah. All right, baptisms, um, you saw that? We're no longer going to do baptism only on second Sunday. We're going to do it whenever you want to get baptized. Amen. If you, if you join the church today and say, I want to be baptized Wednesday, we're going to baptize you Wednesday. If you join the church today and say, I want to be baptized after service, just give us enough time to fill that pool and we're going to dip you. We're going to baptize you. Now, just understand this. If you want to get baptized right away, that water is going to be cold. And here's what I told the deacons yesterday. I would not expect them to get in the cold pool, but if they have anybody that said, Pastor, I want to get baptized today, I would tell them to fill that pool. I'll come baptize you myself. It's that important that you get baptized. Amen? Also, if you were baptized because your mama made you get baptized and you did not understand why you get, got baptized, you really need to get baptized again with an understanding of what baptism means. Amen? 
Amen. Let me do the Men of Faith trip, Tennessee. Mighty men sound off. Mighty men sound off. All right, the retreat is August 4th to the 6th. Uh, $50 deposit is due by the end of the month. A $50 deposit is due. Total cost is $490. That is your transportation. That is your lodging. That is your food for all three days. Um, that's for your whitewater rafting, your zip lining, your paintballing, all the things we're going to do. All of that is included in that price. Amen? So um, I'm asking you brothers to get on the ball. Make that sacrifice. As wives, if you're married to these brothers, now, you know, cut back on a Big Mac, do something. Make sure you get the deposit in. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Also, if you're interested, thank you, brothers. If you're interested in being in the social media or graphic design team, if you're interested in being on the social media graphic design team, please see Minister Lear Team Martin. Stand up, wave at the people, do the beauty smile thing. You know how to do that. She'll be at the front desk. And we have two high school seniors that are leaving to go to the military. One is going to the military after church. And man, if you're here today, we want to pray over you. Those two high school seniors, if you're here, please come forward. Please come forward. You come stand in the gap for them. Amen. All right, so here's what I need. Everybody that served in the military, come stand behind them. If you served in the military, come stand behind them, please. Huh? Is recruiters in church? Oh, hey, man, come on, brother. Man, that's good. My man gone into the service and brought his recruiter to church with him. That's what I'm talking about. Good to have you here this morning, brother. Thank you, sir. All right. All right, all right, all right. Elder Steele, Elder Steele, all y'all get around it. All y'all that were in the military, get around him. I was not in the military. Elder Steele, I need you to lay hands and pray on him. Hey, man, what branch you going to, sir? Marine. Marine Corps, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, everybody point a hand at him. Also, we have um, Kelly. She's up here for her daughter. Um, and she's leaving on Tuesday. Amen. So she's standing in the gap. So all y'all over on that side, swing around. Just get all the way around him. Come on. Just get all the way around him. Amen. And now just still lay hands on both of them, sir. Hold on. Where's that mic? Reach me that mic, please. And it's a great honor when you go serve your country, man. I don't care what nobody tell you, it's an honor. I, I thank you for you wanting to go do that to protect me so I can sleep. Yes, Amen? You got it, sir? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now lifting up all recruits at this time, Lord. All those high school seniors right now, Lord, that are leaving, departing for the military, Lord. We ask that you not only cover them and protect them, Lord, protect their families, Lord. Give them the strength, comfort, and peace, Lord. Guide their, and order their footsteps, Lord, as they go to serve our country, Lord, that, that you give them the know-how, Lord, and the resources that they're able to serve well, Lord. They're not just serving for the country, Lord, but they're serving for your kingdom as well, in the mighty name of Jesus. Allow every, every, every challenge and obstacle to be a learning experience that they're able to share and, 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 and give their testimony of deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Strengthen them all in the mighty name of Jesus. Protect them. Travel in grace, Lord. And we know that victory is yours, Lord, that we all operate in the, in the glory of your victory, Lord. Continue to be with them all. And, uh, and we stand in the gap for those soldiers that that are on the front line at yes, this time, Lord. Lord, in the mighty yes, name God. of Jesus, Lord. Strengthen them, Lord, that's serving right now. Strengthen those families right now, Lord. Give them peace that surpass all understanding, Lord. And as we know, Lord, we, we want the victory of returning home safe. Yes, yes. And whole in a, yes, with God. a sound mind. Yes, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, God. We give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Go in peace, son. Amen. Amen. Uh, congratulations to y'all. Thank you for being here, sir. God bless you. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Come on. Can we give it up for our youth one more time? 
Amen, amen, amen. Turn the house lights up just a little bit for me. Anyone that's visiting with us for the very first time, would you please stand? If you're a first-time guest, we're not going to ask you to say nothing to do nothing. Just stand for us for the very first time. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all. I'm Pastor Lawrence, my lovely wife, Pastor Gita, my Rick. Good to see you in the house, man. Uh, we want to say thank you. We know that you could have been anywhere else today, but you listened to the voice of God and you came here. We pray that you had a wonderful experience with us. We pray that the worship was, was a good experience for you, that you were able to release and meet God in that intimate place. And we pray that the word was something to encourage you today, that for you to understand that you are more than more than enough, just like you are in the eyesight of God. Amen? Now, we want you to know that because you came through those doors, we already consider you to be our church family. Amen. We consider you to be part of this family. Now, if the Lord leads you to do so, we don't force it on you. Please fill out the Get Connect card in the seat if you want to connect as a friend, as a member. We'd like to keep you informed of what we do here at our church. Amen. Amen. Everybody point a hand at them and say, we love you, whether you like it or not. All right. God bless you all. Thank you. Let's put our hands together for them. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's a hot song. I like that song, boy. I like that song. All right. Anybody celebrating a birthday this week? We got one. Amen. We got two. Hallelujah. Anybody else celebrating a birthday this week? Amen. I'm going to start now. Mine is on the week now. I'm, I'm just playing. Amen. Is your birthday you're standing in the gap? For your daughter. Amen. I see you all. I, you know we used to make y'all dance. We don't do that anymore. Amen. But everybody point a hand at them and say happy birthday. May you live to see many, many more. We pronounce you will live long, strong, healthy, and wealthy for the rest of your days. Amen. God bless you. Anybody celebrating the anniversary this week? Anybody got married anytime? Pastor Gales, you got your hand raised? Hold up now. You that got married, I don't know nothing about it. <laughs> Okay, awesome. She's standing in the gap for her daughter, Rona. 25 years of marriage on Tuesday. Yes, ma'am. Javon and Ashley got married yesterday. Got married yesterday. You celebrate 24 hours. Amen. <laughs> hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Um, once again, man, thank you guys for being in, in service this morning. We do have a wedding immediately after service. So once we dismiss, I'm going to need everybody. Unless you want to stay for the wedding, everybody's invited to the wedding. We ain't telling nothing about the, re about the reception. You're invited to the wedding. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But uh, right after service, I'm going to need you to vac vacate. Holding your tithe, holding your offering in the air, let's do our declaration over it. Say, Lord, this is my tithe. This is my offering. These are the seeds I sow. I believe that every word in my Bible is inspired by you. Therefore, I have a right to name the seed, command the seed to go, to grow, and to come back to me 100-fold in the name of Jesus. Now, if you got that crazy, cheeky faith and believe you already have it, wave it in the air and say, I already got it in Jesus' name. Amen. The buckets on the inside aisles against the walls. If you would get the bucket from under your seat, pass it to the outside aisle. And here it is. If you choose to sit on the end, you have to celebrate everybody's seed. So you don't want to celebrate their seed, don't sit on the end no more. Hallelujah. If you're on the end, you got to stand up and celebrate their seed. Come on, let's go. Let's go.
Everyone standing on your feet. Everyone standing on your feet. Holding your right hand in the air. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Have a seat. 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 I was told they have to talk to you and I have to vacate the premises. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory, glory. Glory, hallelujah. How many of you know what June the 3rd is at uh, 7 p.m.? All the way out of the building, woo, Jesus. Woo, woo, woo. It is Pastor Weathersby's 60th birthday party. So everyone, take your phone out. Hurry up, take your phone out. You must.